This is 6-6 six, six with Valia Death Radio, and of course I've got 13 shots on. Uh, these guys are the takeover artists of the month for HorrorPunks.com. I've got Jamie Rocks, and won't you guys uh, introduce the rest of your guys' crew you got there? Hello, everybody. We are 13 shots. My name's Johnny Rocks. My name's Izzy, and I'm Joe Public. And together we make lots of noise. Okay, man, the first thing I want to ask of, man, is first off, you guys are from England. Um, the punk scene, I mean, the punk scene in England is, like, fucking legendary. You got The Clash, you got uh, The Sex Pistols. What is the punk scene like in England today? Pretty similar to that, to be honest with you. Um, still very much copying the original style, the original sound. Um, yeah, not many people scared to break the mold. I think they think if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, is the scene still as crazy? I mean, there was a lot of clubs supporting punk, and um, the streets were full of people with safety pins and the hawks and everything. Is there still a punk scene, or is metal kind of supplanted punk in uh, um, in England? I think it's more mainstream music that's done that. I mean, most of the uh, punk shows that we do now, we're playing to the same people who would have been going to the shows in the 70s and the 80s, if we're honest. Um, but still, it's still as much fun as it, as it was then. They still give it as much balls as they used to. There's a couple of guys, actually, that, um, well, yeah, they swear at the traffic and they come up to the <laughs> microphones while we're on stage go, you fucking suck, play some faster, man. <laughs> but in general, yeah, um, it's good for us. Yeah, it, it, apparently, if they're not spitting in our face, we're no good. Well, yeah. Here's the thing, man, and we have the same problem over here, man, like, you know, the fucking dick groups like Shitty Nickelback and, and Rap is taking over and R&B. Um, do you guys have a problem booking your live shows and getting people to show up? Because it's a huge problem with punk and metal bands, not so much mainstream metal, but like some of the smaller bands and stuff, shows are really having a uh, low turnout and stuff. Do you guys have that problem? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's very difficult to get people to actually come out. Booking gigs isn't a problem because... The pubs have the thought that if, if there's if there's a band in, then people will come. So they do no promotion whatsoever. They just get a band, and then it's up to us. So that's why you'll see that I'll spend many nights on the internet trawling for flesh to try and get to come along to the shows. But, yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, we're playing a show in Blackpool tomorrow night. It's um, our first really far-out-of-town gig, and we're a bit nervous on how many people are actually going to show up because it's an entire night of horror punk. And I'm just not sure how it's going to go. But well, hopefully we'll have a good time. Yeah, now, you know, horror punk is, uh, um, here is, is, is kind of like a subgenre. I mean, even punk is taking like a really backseat. Uh, um, every, you know, it's like metal. Metal's fractured. You've got grindcore and death metal. And, you know, there's all kinds of shit now. And in punk, you got like Psycho Billy and, and straight horror punk and stuff like that. How do you guys classify your band and your sound? <laughs> that's a hard question. Yeah. yeah. So, Lewis, what was, Izzy, what would you say? I couldn't even say. We're just a, we're just a band, don't we? Yeah. We're just, kind of like, we're just kind of like a clusterfuck of horror punk, blues, some kind of pseudo rockabilly, yeah. some Gary Trasper, a bit of everything. Basically, when me and Joe got together to form this band, we had one, agree one universal agreement, which was that we weren't going to put ourselves in the category. We wanted to just go out and make music with some horror, horror themes because I'd never written songs in story form before. I'd always written about what's going on in my life and stuff like that. And I thought, you know what, I want to try something different and I want to start writing stories. So we, we agreed on the horror theme to go with it, but we always said we were never going to follow a set genre and I think that's why our album sticks out to me anyway because there's a different track on every, like every track's different yeah I, I just actually got a copy of Vaudeville and uh, I mean there, there is there's a difference in every track I mean I can sign a I can hear like regular punk in there and I can hear the you know the classic misfit horror punk sound but there's also like a, a psycho Billy feel there too where you've got that twanginess and that edginess man um, what does it mean for you for a, an American website like horror-punks.com to let you take over their website for an entire month? Well, yeah, to start off with, um, I'd like to thank everybody because 
we are so overwhelmed with the support that we have had since releasing this album because we had no idea how this was going to go. This was a this was a dream that me and Joe had created, and the other guys who joined the band embraced it. And the thing about Vaudeville is it was written mostly by myself and Joe. Um, Izzy only joined on on bass guitar originally in December and came in to record material that he had no say in the writing, but he still came in and he embraced it. And we were just really worried about how everything was going to go. So when we got the invite from Horror, Horror Punks, it was just, it was unbelievable. Because, I mean, Stellar Corpses were on were the takeover the, the month before us. And how do you follow the Stellar Corpses, man? They're unbelievable. Well, you see, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, here's my thing with, with bands like the Stellar Corpses. They carry that horror punk flag. Um, but I'm sure you guys have heard of AFI. AFI started off as a horror punk band. And they've kind of transmorphed into something altogether different. Um, it, it, in Stellar Corpses, it seems like in this last album, they're kind of heading that way where they're kind of going more mainstream, even though they still have that horror element. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough over here, and I don't know about over there, like you guys get airplay and stuff like that. I think we're the only radio station online that plays horror punk pretty steady. Um, do you guys have a problem with people playing your album over over in England or over in Europe? Um, w- there isn't very uh, many radio stations in the in the UK that do horror punk at all, or psychobilly, or punk in general, really. I mean, we've got um, I don't know if you get it in the states, a magazine called Kerrang. Yes. They have a radio station here, which is actually based in our in our city. But they give very little exposure to local bands, very little exposure to English bands in general. Like they just mostly American bands. Yeah, but it's not even like rock that they play. Mostly it's, indie. Yeah, we yeah, used to be. It used to be that they played a lot of rock, but now they've kind of drifted more towards playing indie. But a place, a place in Europe that still embraces horror punk, punk and roll, psychobilly, ev- everything like that in such an amazing way is Germany. And I'll tell you one thing: if it weren't for the Germans, I think we'd, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, but you know, we're. Uh, I'm actually. Well, I, I, I Jamie Rotten Corpse and Jamie Rotten Corpse and the Rising Dead is, is a huge. He listens to our show, and he's a good friend. I talk to him all the time, um, and we've had him on an interview like you guys are doing here. He says Germany's just just fucking fanatical for horror punk. Well, you've got you've got not just them. You've got um, Crimson Ghosts as well. As, and, but you look at them two bands and us and you think how, how do we all fit into one category that's the beautiful thing about horror punk in general is you can fit so many different other genres into it and it, and it, and it works so well um, you guys your guys is a vaudeville CD is, is a self release CD you're selling it yourself uh, do you find it's easier to do that where you know because of the way the internet is and stuff now you can do it on iTunes yourself and Spotify and uh, digital downloads um, does that just make it easier and you cut out the middleman and you know you're getting most of the cash that comes from it yeah it is it works a lot better I mean we're actually in the process of um, setting up our own record label to support us in the future as well because we had a few we had a few offers to, to release Vaudeville for us but they, were t- they wanted to take 30% of what we made, which I had no problem with. If they were offering stuff, but they couldn't offer us any, um, any airtime, um, no, no, any radio station to play us, any magazines to review us. And I thought, well, I can do all that myself. Right. So we just set out and purely have, have released it ourselves. And at the moment, unless we get an absolutely awesome label, like, there's a couple of German labels I'd sign to tomorrow if they were interested in us. But um, other than that, I'll, we'll stick always to doing it by ourselves. Although I do miss MySpace a lot. Because well, MySpace you used to be able to get a lot of exposure. We, we play a lot of metal, and I know it's not really talking about horror punks here, but a lot of metal bands here are doing it, um, especially unsigned bands and local bands. Um, just because if you would sign with a small independent label... They're not offering you anything, and, and I think that's, you know, it seems to be the same way in Europe. You know, they're not promising them money or radio play or anything. It's just kind of like, hey, we're a signed band. What do you fucking do? I could do it myself. Yeah. Well, the, the only labels that were interested in us were American labels. 
and and that's got to be hard for you guys to come over here and tour unless you're guaranteed, uh, you know, money and 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 you know per diem and and guaranteed show dates. That's got to be tough for you guys to sign on with an American label. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, I'll tell you, we'd be, if we got a call asking us to tour America and they had dates, we'd be there tomorrow. It would it would be a dream come true to play there. I mean, I've been I've been to the states myself and I've seen bands play there, and it, it's great crowds, but. Like you say, if you're part of an American label, there's no real point unless you can be over there working your nuts off to to make a name for yourself. And and we've noticed here because we go to all kinds of shows and stuff. Um, the economy seems to be really be dragging down a live audience. And I mean, we're oversaturated with media where like my cell phone can stream movies and music and stuff like that. Is that really hurting the live experience for unknown bands and people are saving their money? for the larger tours and the larger bands and if you if you guys have felt the economic crunch in the bar scene and in the club scene over in, in england yeah I, th I think we have i mean a, a prime example of that at the moment is um, black sabbath as you know are back together and they are doing a one-off show in our hometown before they play the uh, download music festival and i got quite excited i thought seeing ozzy and the boys back together but when i came to ticket prices it was 45 pounds to see them which is about... About $80 um, American? Yeah, yeah, something like that. But then if you say that your ticket prices in America are expensive. I get quite jealous when I look at some of the tours that you have because um, I'm a big fan of a, a Danish band called Volbeat. I don't know if you've heard of them. Oh, dude, I love Volbeat. Excellent band. Uh, that's what we like to hear. And they were on tour with a band called Cold, who I've been into for, yet again, not very horror punk, I know, but... Their, their music is beautiful and Scooter can write some amazing lyrics. But they were on tour together in the States and it was, I think, $12, $13 to see the two of them together. Right. Well, yeah, yeah we, we, we've seen that where major bands are, you know, I mean, you still got your bands that are um, charging, you know, like in an American money, $125 for a ticket, especially somebody like Sabbath or The Who or, or The Rolling Stones. Um, but it seems like some of the, the bands, like even Metallica, which is gigantic, has actually lowered their ticket prices just to get people to come to shows. Yeah, and I also read, um, read an article in the uh, newspaper a few weeks ago that said that bands like Metallica, um, Madonna as well, and people like that are actually touring Europe. They brought their European tours forward by two years because they fear that the uh, crisis in the Europe it's going to get that bad that the currency is going to drop and they're no longer going to make money. So they're rushing in all their tours for the next two years because they, they're predicting it to crash right. so they can start touring America again. Yeah, you know, the economic situation is definitely hitting bands, and it, it's, it's good to see you guys doing it yourself. I know it kind of sucks and it's kind of a scary thing, but it's probably a lot easier on you just to say, you know what, we're going to do it ourselves. Um, now, Vaudeville just dropped. Um, I know that you guys are... Um, taking the money from the sale of Vaudeville to do another EP. Um, explain some of the cost of, of actually recording and getting a professional made CD done. Well, um, we're very fortunate actually because we have a, a very talented producer who's been a friend of mine for, for how long have I known Alex? About 14, 15 years. We were actually um, in bands together touring when we were 16, 17. Um, learning our trades and he's he's an amazing producer but he has a little studio set up in a garage and he charges very little for for the um, recordings that we do but the main reason why we want it we're using that to get back in the studio is as i said before vaudeville was written by really myself and joe and since we're now a, fi a full five piece of um, an established life we wanted izzy to have a little bit more contribution in the writing and our bass player GMT's written a few songs as well and it, the next EP will be the first show of what we are, we are about now because I mean Izzy is he, a very good guitarist and he's, he's very 80s as you can probably tell by the name and we've written a couple of more glammy songs would you say? A bit of funk as well. A little bit of funk, yeah. <laughs> we're just so it will be a, it will be the first example of what we, we can do as a five piece, but it won't cost that much to record because of the contacts that we have. We're quite fortunate in that way. 
Well, you know, I love your music, man, and it was great for you guys to sit down and do an interview with me. Um, where can the people find your, uh, your CD or your EP for download? Um, we'll put a link up on our, 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 uh, our website, and Horror Punks is doing it for you as well. Um, but are you guys on iTunes and Amazon Music and stuff like that? We're not yet. We'll be going on that by the end of this month, we hope. We've got the funds to actually set that up now. So that's, um, that's the next goal is to get this one on iTunes and Amazon. But if you visit our website, 13shots.co.uk, or find us on Facebook, there's links to um, our band's campsite where you can download it all from. And we also have um, hard copies that are available that we sign, and it doesn't cost very much to ship to America at all. So you're more than welcome to grab a hard copy also. 